Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we have uh, an Atari 26, well, the Sears version of the Atari 2600. It is the, sorry, Telegames, uh, Sears Telegames uh, Video Arcade. And this one does not power on, or at least doesn't appear to power on. If, uh, got it plugged in. Turn the power on. I see this button's a little stiff, but turn it on. And look at the TV. We got nothing. Cobra! So yeah. So it doesn't appear to be doing much of anything. So uh, let's set up the camera and take this thing apart and check it out. Okay, so now we have the Sears Telegames unplugged and we're just gonna flip it over, remove the screws, which there are, I think what, eight of them? Two, four, yeah, so there's screws along that top row, two screws there, and two screws on the bottom here. So we're just gonna remove those screws and get this thing taken apart. Okay, now that we have it apart, we can take the top off. And this thing is pretty dirty, but it's kind of expected considering the age of these things. But all right, let's uh, get rid of the fuzz. Again, another great reason to uh, wear gloves. So you never know what's going to be inside of here. <laughs> All right. So let's maybe do some uh, voltage tests and see if this thing is getting any uh, voltage. All right, so let's plug this thing in. Grab our trusty multimeter okay so should be able to use this part right here for ground I guess we can make sure should probably be grounded to this yeah so that is good ground all right so power comes from down there into here so let's check this capacitor real quick and the capacitor is getting 14 volts and I think since the switch is in the off position it probably should be getting nothing hmm. yeah it's getting nothing It's all sorts of screwy. There we go. All right. So that part of the switch is getting the 14 volts, but the rest, the rest should be getting nothing, which pretty much they are, because the switch is in the off position. So then down here, we have the voltage regulator, which has three pins, one uh, for input, the middle one is ground and the other one's output so what the voltage regulator should be doing is taking the 14 volts that's coming into the system from the power adapter and converting it down to 5 volts that the system needs to actually run um, so let's see if we're getting that and we are getting nothing that's probably because it's turned off so let's turn it on 
let's see, now we should probably get this bottom pin here. I'm trying to get something. So I get in half volt at the voltage regulator. Half volt at the switch. Just getting the full 14 volts. This should be getting nothing. I'm getting half a volt. Okay. Getting at the top pin here. Getting the 14 volts, middle pin, half a volt, another half a volt. Keep it back, turn it on. Okay, so now it's that it's making a better connection. We're getting about 14 volts when it's turned on at the bottom set of pins. So let's look at the voltage regulator now. Okay, now we're getting 13 volts in, so we should be getting 5 volts out. And we are still only getting half a volt out. So this voltage regulator might actually be bad. And since I have a bunch of those, I'm just going to go ahead and replace that and see if that's all that's wrong with this thing. So, let's see how we take this board off. Okay, I think this should come out. Yeah. And unscrew here. Screw here. Maybe. There we go. Cable for the RF. I think this should just slide yeah. Just slides right up. Okay, so this is the voltage regulator. Like I was showing you before. And again, so voltage should come in on the top pin there. Uh, the middle one is ground, and then voltage should come out lower than what comes in. On that bottom pin and that'll be what the system uses to power itself so again it'll take you know in this case the 14 volts and then jump it out to about 5 volts and that's what the system needs and that's what it's not doing so I'm thinking this is bad and we should be able to just replace this so let's uh, go ahead and see how hard that will be use a brush real quick and kind of dust this thing off. I mean, this thing needs a good cleaning. Need to get some kind of like contact cleaner so I can put it in these switches. I don't, actually don't have a contact cleaner. I should look into getting one. I hear that it's a deoxid five is actually pretty good, so 
if anyone has any experience or recommendations, please let me know. All right, jeez. It's nasty. All right. So, I'm going to unscrew this screw that's keeping the voltage regulator down to this uh, ground plane, which just acts as a heat sink because as uh, the way these things work is, you know, when when they're uh, converting down the voltage, it the in this case, say, um, we'll just round it up to, you know, the 15 volts down to the 5. That's, you know, 10 volts wasted, and that's going to generate a lot of heat. Um, so that's why there's a little paste on here and then this big ground plane that acts like a heat sink to keep these things from burning up. All right, so we're going to get you guys a better view and desolder this thing. Okay, so got a better look on this voltage regulator. So I'm just going to flip this over and we're going to take a look at it and, and see. And actually, I actually don't know if you can see that. This might not actually be bad. If you can see these two pins right here. There's a crack in the solder. They're not very soldered down very well. And that could be enough to cause uh, this issue if it's just a poor solder joint. Let's just reflow those and see if we get a better lock. Grab my soldering gun. Or soldering iron, rather, sorry. Get some solder. a little bit of flux. And let's flow some solder onto here. Okay, and that looks much better. Clean it up a little bit. So actually, I just want to say real quick, I got a new uh, soldering tip. Let's see, and it's this little hook. It's actually, I was, it's really good. I, uh, I like it um, for like laptop motherboards and things like that because you can get a real fine point. So I wasn't sure how it was going to work on this because usually the through hole components are a little bit thicker than the point here. But it's cool because you could just use, you know, different. You can either use the tip or the side and just kind of get the angle and the width you need and it applies a good enough heat to to work so I don't know I think this is gonna be my new everyday tip and so far I'm loving it all right well that was a little random but let's see what we can do here maybe throw this thing back on here plug it in see what kind of voltages we're getting So, got it in, got it plugged in. Now let's uh, 
Let's actually screw it back down. There's the screw right there. Just if anyone's wondering, actually, if you have one of these multimeters and you just turn it on like this and you use the light to light up the screen, after, you know, however many seconds, it turns off, which is fine and all, but sometimes, you know, you don't want it to turn off because you may be using it for a while. So if you hold it down and move to what you want, you'll see that, you know, I guess timeout off, I don't know what L means, but now when you turn it on, It'll say on the duration of the uh, the time you're using it. Well, that's kind of cool. All right, so turn this on. Getting voltage here. Got backwards, but we're not getting not getting good volts here. Switch. It could be this switch could be the problem. Okay, getting thirteen there. Thirteen there. Still have a volt there. So now this thing is probably bad. All right, let's take it back out and replace it. All right. So now we have this ready to to remove and uh, normally I would just use my desolder and gun to do this but I would like to show you that you know even without expensive tools it can can be done all you need is patience a good solder and iron and some some wick so let's see Hold that there for a second. Do you see the braid uh, suck up that solder? So I guess I would say that if you're gonna do bigger through hole components like this, you could probably get away with using a little bit thicker desolder and braid. But this is all I got. enough to get this out gently. There we go. So it's really that simple. Um, obviously this is a little pretty easy example, but again, I just want to show you that, you know, even if you have the basic tools and some patience, you can, you can get it done. All right, so let's clean up this area. get this thing working, I'm probably going to go through this with like a uh, fiberglass pen or something like that and just try and clean it up, but let's get it working first before we waste our time doing that. Okay, so now I have a replacement. So we need 05. Um, honestly, this is not I don't think this is one of the one of the ones I have from my batch of new ones, but I don't know where that is. So, but I'm pretty positive this one works. Probably pulled this from 
something that was not working. So I'm gonna stick it in there and then kind of bend it. I'm actually gonna use the screw to kind of keep it in place. Screw it in for now. Gotta go in a little bit more. Sorry for the blurriness. But just screw in a screw into a hole, so it's yeah, it's not gonna win any Emmys or anything, so don't worry about that. Okay. So that's in there just to keep it in place. Alright, so let's flip it over. Add some flux. Grab some solder. And solder this in place. Come on. There we go, we got some solder. Grab our trusty solder and iron. And let's go. Those, oh, I'm sorry. I think part of this ground trace came up, got damaged. Huh. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, behind there, this trace is damaged. So, well, we'll I have it soldered now. We'll see if it makes a proper connection to ground. If it doesn't, we will fix that. Fill in this a little bit. Okay, that should be good. It's not very, not not really pretty. I mean, not the greatest solder. I'm not terrible. Not the greatest. For now, let's okay. So let's see if we created any shorts. Make sure that ground connection is good. So I'm just going to put the multimeter in continuity mode. And again, as in previous videos, we've gone over. That, that just basically means when you hear that means the uh, you know the connections connect to each other point you know point A to B so like in this case we want this middle pin ground to connect to ground so anything that's grounded should be ground so the capacitor up here that's ground this is ground. One of the, I think this one's ground over here. This one shouldn't be. Okay. So we got a good connection to ground, so we don't have to fix that trace. Now let's make sure this is not. That's not to ground. That's not to ground. They're not together. And they're not together. Okay. So this thing looks like it's. should be fine. So let's plug it all back together and. See if we have a better reaction. All right, so now here we go. We have this thing loosely put back together. Go. 
get our uh, multimeter out. Turn it on. Alright, let's check some voltages again. So up here. Oh, we're getting 10 volts now instead of 14. Interesting. Let's say up here. Uh, well, it helps if I touch the... There we go. 10 volts. Bottom. 10 volts. Alright, so everything's good. 10 volts. And there we go. 4.9 volts, which is good enough. So that's interesting. Now that we're getting 10 volts, I wonder if having a working voltage regulator adds more resistance to the entire circuit and drops it down to 14 volts. Uh, sure. Does that make sense? Uh, you tell me. All right. So now we have to test and see if it works. So let's turn it off. Okay, so got this thing hooked up now, and we're going to test to see if it works, so we're going to put a game in it. Trusty old Pac-Man. And we're going to point ourselves to the Sony Cobatron, and we're going to turn it on. And we got nothing. That is because I'm a fool, and we did not plug in the RF cable, which I don't know where it is. Where is it? Apparently it's tangled up. It seemed to tangle around every tool that I own. Come on. So we're going to... Plug this in right down here. I apologize for this terrible video here, but I don't really have a decent tripod or way to test and show you if it works or not without holding it. Okay. It wants to do something. It still doesn't work. All right, let's see. It might just be dirty. Okay, so I uh, took a, some alcohol and I cleaned the cartridge and the, the game slot and the RF input, and that didn't make much of a difference. So uh, I didn't do it on camera because it was hard to do it one-handed, and I didn't want to set up the uh, above, you know, bird eye view for for that. But uh. I did figure out what's wrong with it, and you will laugh at me. Uh, so, everything's plugged in. Turn it on. Still, you see, got nothing there. But, here, we switch that. Now we got a picture, and now it's working. So yeah, this is the uh, you know channel three or channel four select for the RF adapter, and apparently it was not set for channel three or A in this case. I think it is. Um, but yeah, so it looks like the uh, game is working on our again good old Cobertron, and yeah. So at least now that we know we got this thing working. Uh, I'll test out the controllers, but there's I have no reason to think the controller won't work. Um, but I think I'm going to take this apart, clean it up, and maybe I'll show you uh, just you know, an after video of what this thing looks like, like all nice and cleaned up. Probably take me a while, so I want to do a good job. But uh, yeah, so this was simple voltage regulator. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and make you guys sit through me putting it all back together. But thanks for checking it out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, until next time.